Hello everyone, back tuning into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMDF 30 day model for the UK and for Europe too uh, for today's uh, first video as always on a Tuesday. So it's going to be covering the next month. It's going to take us through to the end of uh, March and we'll see what the ECMDF is forecasting in terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies for uh, Europe for the uh, next for the next um, month, next four weeks. Uh, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. I'll be with you on my homepage uh, later on this afternoon. So we're going to start off with the uh, week one temperature anomaly. It's week 10th of the year, week one uh, for our forecast period. We're at the Hungarian Met Office, by the way, for this. So big thank you to them for supplying us uh, with the charts. This is taking us from the 4th through to the 10th of March. And we can see that it's actually turning colder than average in the week ahead across uh, northern parts of Europe. So we've got Scandinavia here and around the Baltic Sea looking quite cold. Temperature anomalies going uh, colder than average. Also for parts of Ireland and uh, Scotland, temperatures have lowered or will be lowering there down to average or a little bit below. Those are the exceptions to the rule, though. Most other parts of Europe are looking mild or even quite warm in the week ahead. So the west of Europe in the week ahead uh, from the 4th to the 10th of March coming out around a degree uh, above average. But from France to Germany, eastwards, it's even warmer than that, to around three and six degrees above average. And across these far eastern parts of uh, Europe, so from eastern Poland back into Ukraine, we see temperatures there, uh, temperature anomalies between six and 10 degrees uh, above average, a very warm week coming up across much of the east of Europe. Through the Mediterranean, uh, we've got uh, above average temperature anomalies as well. Uh, Portugal, so uh, we find that uh, uh, at Portugal we've got uh, average temperature anomalies, but from Spain eastwards through the central bowl of the May, temperature anomalies around 1 to 3 degrees above average, and then down in the southeastern corner, it's even warmer than that, uh, it's around uh, 3 to 6 degrees above average, and going up towards the Asiatic and the Balkans and to the Black Sea uh, above average too. Bit of a north-south split with precipitation in the week ahead, so uh, we find we've got quite a wet wave actually from the UK, Ireland and northern France over towards central parts of Europe, so southern Scandinavia, kind of like Denmark, southern Norway and Sweden, uh, above average precipitation uh, through there, and then going up towards the Baltic uh, areas again, uh, above average precipitation there. The very far north of Scandinavia, it's drier than average, then down through much of the Med, also looking drier than average from Spain and Portugal eastwards, so uh, many of the holiday islands are looking okay, above average temperature anomalies and drier than average, around the Balearic Islands and Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, all of those areas looking quite pleasant in the week ahead. Italy also looks quite nice. I mean, uh, we go over the Adriatic and down into the southeast corner. And again, precipitation anomalies are uh, drier than average there. So generally quite wet in the north and west of Europe in the week ahead, drier in the south and in the southeast too. So we go through to week 11 for 2019, which of course is week two for our forecast period. This is how things are looking. Generally cooling down, really, across most parts of Europe. Those warmer than average temperature anomalies are pushing to the very, very far east of Europe. So over towards the Black Sea and then up into southern parts of Russia. That's where we've got the uh, temperature anomalies still looking quite mild. Temperatures between 1% and six degrees above average. But most parts of Europe are cooling down to around average, possibly even hinting at being a little bit cooler than average, particularly so for Scandinavia, you're looking quite cold up there. The UK and Ireland close to average, possibly hinting being a little bit on the cooler than average side. And even parts of the low countries, France and Germany, we possibly hint at being a little bit below average there. Uh, from the 11th to the 17th of March. Much of the Mediterranean is also looking cooler, returning closer to average, except in the southeastern corner of uh, Spain there. Still a little bit warmer than average. And it still looks quite unsettled uh, as well here as we go from the 11th to the 17th of March. So it's a bit drier than average still for Spain and Portugal and generally in this western basin of the Mediterranean. From Italy down into southeastern Med, so Greece and Turkey, Cyprus, it looks a little bit wetter than average through there. Uh, and then going further north, actually most parts of Europe looking quite unsettled. So the UK and Ireland, much of France, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Germany, up to Denmark, and to the far south of Norway and Sweden, 
bit above average with precipitation. It does look pretty unsettled through this middle part of March. Um, a little bit more precipitation as well for these eastern parts of Europe. So, Obviously, the ridge that's bringing those very mild temperatures to the east of Europe this week, breaking down and pushing even further east towards the Black Sea as we get through to the middle of March, allowing cooler and more unsettled weather to push into the east of Europe. For far north of Scandinavia, it is looking uh, rather drier up there in uh, this middle phase of March. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we go through to week uh, three, week 12 for the year. And uh, we see another change with most parts of Europe going very mild then. So temperature anomalies uh, get a real boost as we go from the 18th to the 24th of March, looking much warmer through uh, Scandinavia. We lose those colder than average temperature anomalies. Most central parts of Europe also going milder than average. And out in the far uh, west and northwest, we find Ireland and the UK uh, going milder than average, as is France and as is uh, much of Spain and Portugal as well. From Italy down towards the southeast, it's close to average there, but it's, it is a much milder scene as we go into the second half of March. Temperatures taking uh, a, getting a real boost as we go f um, through to the second half of March. And also it looks like going drier uh, as well. So um, we find that uh, we lose those wetter than average precipitation anomalies. It looks drier than average through parts of uh, France, through the central parts of uh, Europe too. So it's a little bit unsettled for the UK and Ireland, particularly Ireland, a bit above average with precipitation there. Otherwise, it's close to average or no signal, but it does look as though it's shifting towards something warmer, drier, with high pressure re-establishing, I think, as we're going into the second half of March after a rather colder and more unsettled first half, and particularly uh, mid-month period. And then we go through to week four. It's week 13 for our year. And we end March on a very mild note from the 21st to the 3rd, from the 25th to the 31st of um, March. It looks milder than average again through most parts of Europe. Again, this far east and southeastern corner, it's a little bit cooler there, closer to average. But most parts of Europe, the UK and Ireland included, going quite significantly above average, widely between one and three degrees above average. So this is looking like a very mild second half to March, uh, I have to say, for much of Europe. And then we go through to uh, the precipitation anomalies. And again, it's a weak signal, but it does look as though it's generally dry on average through many of these central areas. Uh, again, it just tells us that we are likely seeing a re-establishment of high pressure. Notice the wet of an average um, precipitation anomalies being pushed to the very, very far north uh, up here. Most parts of uh, Europe are actually looking a little bit on the dry of an average side in the second half of the month, although it is a weak signal. But it looks like we've got a month for two halves here, really, for uh, Europe, and the UK is uh, very much included in this. So the first half of March is looking unsettled, quite um, wet and windy at times, perhaps above average rainfall, and fairly cool uh, as well, particularly around that middle part of the month. It could actually turn quite cold, I think, in that period. But then the second half of March, and particularly in the final sort of uh, 10 days or so, looks like we re-establish high pressure through Central Europe. It turns a lot milder and it also turns drier uh, as well. So a real month of two halves for March. Spring returns in the second half of the month. That's how we're talking this week. We'll do it all over again uh, next week. Come back later on this afternoon on the homepage where we'll have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.